Hello, hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker. And together, we make the Dad's Drink of Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you very much for making us part of your day. Say hello to the folks, Zeke. Happy Father's Day, Big Cat. I know we are recording this on Father's Day. It's not going to come out for a week and a half, but that's because you're going on vacation. Vacation is a very subjective term. We are going to Dollywood, and I just hope we survive it. You aren't a fan of going to Dollywood? It has nothing to do with a fan of. I just have a less than three-year-old that I think will be maxed out regardless of uh, how much fun they have. I'm expecting some short days, temper tantrums, scratches to the nose, hopefully no kicks to the balls. (sighs) You sound so excited right now. I think it's one of those things that when I'm trying to think because I know my daughter just turned two in March and we are pretty set on the midday nap schedule. So I'm wondering how, like, do you just go to Dollywood, then go back and take a nap, and then go back to Dollywood? Or, I mean, are you allowed to go back in multiple times in one day if you get the ticket? You're asking the wrong person. I don't know. Because it's whatever we do, like today we went to the farmer's market in the morning, and we went to the splash pad in the afternoon, and there was a nap in between. There was a pretty, you know, significant few-hour nap. And, and we have to plan accordingly, like there's a morning activity and an afternoon activity. I'm with you. All right. Uh, I, I don't know. I, old, I, old Zeke just smiles and rolls with the punches. Well, it was Father's Day today. It It is one thing I do want to just take a second. We do have a special guest here today. We will get to him, but I want to take a second and just say thank you to everybody who participated in our Father's Day contest. You guys are great. You're amazing. I can't believe how many pictures we got of y'all plastering Instagram with Dad's Drinking Bourbon. If you were a part of that, we're really, really appreciative. Thank you very much. It was, it was just awesome. I wish we could do that every day. Yeah, I mean, the, the next contest is going to be find somebody taking a you know selfie or other pic that looks like John Edwards has been over. <laughs> I think it's gonna, it's like a you know the Van Pelt. You know, I don't think anybody where, wants to see that. Where is SVP not? Yeah, I don't think anybody. Wants where is to see somebody that. and or actually John Edwards or do you think an awkward bourbon pick of a glass with a handstand and a foot in the air and then a butt cheek and some bourbon? I think we should do something where like we we have cutouts of our faces and and people have to take oh like pictures. the movie yeah ah. Oh. I mean, that movie was good. It was cheesy. Well, up in the air. Up in the air. It's a great... I'm, a, I'm a sucker for those things. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It was a great movie. Any, anyways. We, we can't go to that amount of cheese. Okay. Well, happy Father's Day. Thank you guys for being a part of the contest. So let's get to it. Our guest is one of our good friends. We We do see him outside of here. A super, super, super talented musician. If you haven't seen his Instagram, go ahead and check out his Instagram, Gideon Bowley. It's G-I-D-E-O-N-B-O-L-E-Y. Go check him out, James Earl Tones. He's he's on there just playing the git fiddle all the time, and you are super good. I think we might have to get you to record a new opening for us, or, or maybe some music when we take our break, instead of fast-forwarding uh, the tape, maybe we need some James Earl Tones in there. But, like, the fast-forward is a classic. It's a staple. Yeah, it is. Like, it's like it's the classic Z. Go ahead and fast-forward that tape for us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, welcome. Thank you very much for joining our oh, Thanks for having me. I'm stoked to be here. We are stoked to have you. And we're even more stoked. You brought us a little... We, we didn't get to it yet. There are two whiskeys we're going to try before, admittedly, but... You did bring us a blind that we are going to try while we're doing that fast forward. Anytime you bring whiskey, and I know we're sharing with you, but uh, thank you for bringing something for us. It's one thing I I was born and raised in the South, so hospitality is one like something that I was really raised on. So like I'm not going to show up to somebody else's house empty handed. You know what I'm saying? 
My mom taught me the same thing, but Zeke, did you get taught that? John, I grew up in Podunk, Northwest Georgia. Are you kidding me? Zeke's, <laughs> Zeke's had a rough day. Y'all <laughs> is a staple. Y'all. Zeke has had a rough day. Mm-hmm. I just want to mention. It's like to me when somebody knocks at the door. You know, I told him, like, yeah, you know, we're doing yada yada. Somebody's going to cook, food will be out, whatever. You still inevitably see the random just. It's open, goddammit. I invited you. Come on in. Food's on the table. Make yourself at home. There, there was a good 15 seconds. I was wondering where you were going with that. I looped it in. With toddlers, Father's Day is, you know, it's a lot of Spoiler running. Spoiler alert, we did not play golf today. We did not have the, the annual Dad's Trick at Bourbon golf wow, outing. Wow, wow, wow. After um, two years of me waxing John, this year there was no Dad's playing golf and drinking You bourbon. didn't beat me. It sounded good though, didn't it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, my daughter had a blowout all in the car. Oh. And... <laughs> You're, so, going to, you're going to be finding parts of that tomorrow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at least it was my wife's car. <laughs> oh, there you oh, go. That's terrible. <laughs> no, no, that's the best part ever. Kitty, you you are not at that point yet, so... I get that. He, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> hold on. This happens in my car all the time. Neoprene seats are amazing. I just want to say <laughs> I, uh, thank you to the car companies that are putting out neoprene seats lately. They're very easy to clean. You could take kids' wet wipes and clean your seats up pretty dang well. Quickly and efficiently, too. Yeah. Efficiency is a key. Gideon, you came all this way. Tell the folks about yourself for a second, and then we'll go ahead and talk about whiskey. All this ways right down the street. I happen to live, like, just a few minutes away from the spot. And honestly, it's just a blessing to know these guys. So, yeah. um, Man, moved to town a few years ago. As soon as I turned 21, it was more of like, shoot, let's get into bourbon. Let's have some fun with this, all right? So last year, started getting into it, and then year rolled over, turned 22, met these guys, and it's just been it's been so much fun just to learn so much about what all is going on and just really dive in. And you, what what's your favorite type of whiskey? When I first started drinking, it was rye. Uh, someone turned me on to the Woodford Rise like a starter, and I was like, this tastes like straight cherries. I love this. And then slowly started getting myself into it, and now I'm a, I'm a sucker for some Buffalo Trace stuff. <laughs> it's like, it's bad, y'all. It really is. No, it, it's okay, Zeke. I'm waiting for his joke. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Sorry, John. There's a reason I have that. Cast strength OWA sitting at home and haven't brought it around yet. You have a cast strength OWA? Mm hmm. Did you tell me you had this? I went in Rome. You sneak it out of a bottle. I didn't uh-huh. know that was a thing. <clears throat> it's a blend. Uh-huh. Three barrels, cast strength. Zeke doesn't tell me. That he has a lot of secrets. <laughs> I believe I that. have a lot going on, man. I this It would have been nice if you just said, hey, FYI. I found this the other day. It just happened to appear in my house. I mean, it's there. I don't know. Honestly, keeping up with the day-to-day is fun. Well, Gideon, thank you for joining. Now, you actually, you know, you have a day job, but just like a lot of people in Nashville, you're playing music. What, what kind of stuff do you play? Where can the folks find you? Where can they learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, um, Instagram is probably the best way to reach out to me or um, just kind of see what all I've got going on. And that's just my first and last name, Gideon Boley on Instagram. It's super simple. Um, I'm a guitar player, well, musician all around, I guess. Guitar, pedal steel, piano, vocals. But right now I'm sitting around the country, country world. So I've got my artist that I'm playing with and we're just kind of doing the thing. Well, that's awesome. I've played with him just over a couple of pours, but it was nothing, anything, you know. Well, dude, we played some classics. Come on. Yeah. It, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not good enough to play in Nashville, but I'm good enough to play when we're shared a bottle of Four Roses. I, mean, I didn't play anything earlier today, but uh, much to the chagrin of the other half, there was a long, good 90-minute segment of a uh, 90s country, <laughs> which... My buddy and his wife are over, and uh, he's a bass player. But 
Does she think your tractor sexy? Oh, that came on. <laughs> like literally, he just kept rolling out the hits. His name John as well, but um, we just laughed and like kept like, oh, how do you know all the words to these awful songs? Because they're not awful. On that note, let's get into some whiskey. Amen. So there were two that we tried. Both of these were sent to us, and and Zeke were Zeke and I were talking about putting these in blinds, and we figured these were better just to do a review straight up. But it was interesting to have these both side by side. We had the second release of Doc Fifty Two. If you guys remember, we had the first release before. It's from our friend Ryan Gill down at Doc's Wine Spirits and more in Memphis, Tennessee. They actually took a sourced barrel. They can't necessarily tell you where it's from, but discerning people can put two and two together and realize it's from Dickel. He never told me that. There's no other place it really can be. They put it out. The last one was 110 proof, 55% ABV. We're not 100% sure what proof this one is. I think it's around the same. They're going to have a cast strength that's 59.99 and a 90 proof for 49.99. I'll get into the second whiskey we had. It was a 13-year-old Blender's Mash Crown Royal. But let's talk about this Doc 52 first. Gideon, you're the guest. It's proper to be polite. How about you tell us what you think? Yeah, so I've never tried Doc 52 before. I, I know a little bit about it. Like you said, it's from Memphis, and I had just seen some stuff around the internet. So I knew it was from Memphis, but I never tried it before, so I'm stoked to give it a try. But, man, on the nose, it took me back to good old Austin, Texas. I got straight, specifically Franklin Barbecue, uh, like the hickory smoked. They used to smoke their brisket. It, it like... First sip, I set the glass down and was like, that's what that is. <laughs> I know what that is. It was just, it was so immediate. It was, I thought it was pretty nice. What'd you get in the taste and the finish? Dude, on the palate, I got like a candy corn thing going on, like a, a holiday spice too. Kind of took me to like a, like a zucchini bread, banana bread thing that my mom would bake around Christmas time. And then on the finish, um... Man, it, that the, the spices just kept going for me on it. So it wasn't that bad. Zeke, what did you get on the Talk 52? Nose-wise, there was some mint, some cinnamon, and some heat, and some heat, and some heat. Maybe a little more heat. I don't know. This time of year, I literally just felt it, was, uh, it wasn't meant for a summer drinker. If you're uh, you know, cocktailing or other things or whatnot, it probably would fit, but neat. I wouldn't touch it this time of year. It's just too hot. Um, palette wise, the oak was there, but it wasn't, it was dull. I don't know. It wasn't vibrant. It wasn't a, an old tree, not necessarily fresh or bitter. And then from that, I kind of led into a random segue from a tasting we did to where I said it was equal to or better than multiple barrel, single barrel picks that were tasted. I feel like you were much more awake when we were talking before we got on, you know, behind the mics. No, I, I told you, I tasted this thing and I thought about it and I had like a random thought. And part of it was a tasting and part of it was the barrel pick thing that happened. And when you said barrel pick, you mean actual barrel bourbon, right? Yep. Okay. So Four for those of you listening, 14 samples. We tried them all, uh, Justin Turok, the whole Carruthers and Elixir group, both did picks from that. And to me, that's where this kind of resonated. <clears throat> Sorry, as far as like a point of reference. Um, but I, I thought it was equal to or better than literally all of those 14 samples almost. Well, and, and we'll get to that. Let me... Um... Let me go ahead and give my notes, but you bring up a good point, and I want you to hold that thought. The nose for me, when it was first in the glass, I got super sweet vanilla, but as it opened up, I got more heat on the nose. It doesn't kill me, but I knew something hot was coming. The palate for me was hot damn. I said hot damn on my first sip. It works its way into caramel, vanilla, all that other good stuff. I got a slight amount of corn, but it's not dickle. 
Like, it, it's not that dickle palate. I don't get that dickle corn. I get a slight bit of corn there. It should be important to note, this is 84% corn, 8% malted barley, and 8% rye. So to be 84% corn and not have a super heavy corn taste, I give them credit for picking this. Uh, this is just a, it's a heat bomb. You know, the finish I said, it's a heat bomb that builds from your chest and works up. The heat does not fall down. You almost get to sip it and then it just slowly really works its way back up and makes your whole chest warm. You really get that hug. And it's not often I get a hug, but I, I get a nice chew in my mouth from this. It lingers, but it's that heat that's there. It's something that I really think would be good for fall rather than summer, you know, when it's 90 something degrees outside. But, and, and Zeke, I want to go back to your point. I'm interested in what Gideon thinks about this. So you're talking about the barrels that go anywhere from 90 to 120 bucks, those barrel bourbons. This is $59.99. Now, granted, it is only a store pick. This is essentially a, a bottled separate store pick. And I got to talk to Ryan about this for a long time. He's not getting a lot of store picks down at Doc's Wine and Spirits, and, and they had to improvise a little bit. And an opportunity came along in which they could work with another company and source barrels from a distillery. Well, yeah, it was a distributor thing, though, right? It's all distribution. It's all what the distributors are doing down in Memphis. So they took lemons and made lemonade. It's not necessarily in, in the case of what's going on with like old Baldy and putting out a pick that way. I mean, this is more of a innovation out of necessity. And I think it's interesting to see, will other stores do this? Because this is essentially a store pick, but you have to go to the TTB, you have to get a label, you have to get packaging, you have to do it all yourself, you have to hand label it, hand wax, dip it, do all that other fun stuff. But I think they picked a very novel barrel here and it doesn't taste to me like Dickle would taste. I think it's super unique. I just think the time of the year I would probably enjoy this would be a little later on in the year. I think you're right on the Dickle thing. Um, this last year I've been trying different picks from Dickel and just different sourced things from that they've had it didn't like possess those stereotypical Dickel notes but I think you're dead on with the I think that this would be something you would drink in the fall yeah there's there's no Dickel corn nobody got that especially no. at the mash they, they disclosed I mean if it wasn't there it would have been heavy and if nothing else I would have complained about it to no end <laughs> But, you know, kind of back to the barrel pick, that was something I learned I thought was pretty interesting was there's four different mashes that come out of Dickel. And, I mean, I didn't know that until the pick, and I thought it was pretty interesting. He's like, well, all these are 13 to 14 years old. Here's the range of mashes, etc." And he didn't really say what you could or could not expect, but, you know, you come to your own conclusion. Um, but literally, I mean, for nicely aged Dickel, it's good. It's just too hot right now to drink what i find interesting too is if you think about what dickel does and i don't want this to be a whole dickel conversation but there isn't you mean diageo well not just diageo but i mean this is kind of a diageo show because we're gonna have crown but dickel doesn't put out a cast strength on its own there's not a cast strength dickel not that i know of there are some store picks that could be cast strength in the barrel select program, but Dickel doesn't have an offering on its own that is cast strength. Even the 17 year is not. Say, what is it? 90, 98, 95? No. Is it lower than that? Mm -hmm. It's in the 80s. Is it it's really? 84. Whoa. But it's almost like these are novel ways that you can pick up a Dickel cast strength. And it's 60 bucks. It's not... And I would say get a bottle of this. I'm not... I, I absolutely... I know I said that this is more of a fall thing for me. But I would get this and sit on it until the weather turned. 
But like, it's the same thing for me. Like the Midwinter's Night Dram, I, I'm not gonna drink that dead summer. I drink it one one week out of the year. Exactly. I drink what? it right before Christmas and right after Christmas. Exactly. It's just one of those things where you're just like, that is, that's got its specific time of year. I think it's the same thing as this one. We talked about that recently. Was that on uh, the Heath Clark Craft Brew Show? We talked about that? <laughs> or are you still laughing that you picked me up one last year? <laughs> We're not talking about that. <laughs> no. I mean, I think there are certain things that your palate is going to gravitate towards at certain time of the year. I think even in rye, and Zeke and I talk about this all the time, there's almost like a summer rye and a winter rye. This, to me, just makes me think of weather turning, leaves turning. I don't necessarily... I like it. Don't get me wrong. I really like it. I I don't like it when I'm sweating my butt off and it's 90... Nine degrees outside and humid, and the heat index is over a hundred. This would just make me that much hotter. If the temperature outside matches the proof of what I'm drinking, I don't really know if I'm about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, to suck it with John saying, <clears throat> I mean, it does weigh in heat, very heat sure. heavy, but it's good. It is good. How do you feel, Gideon, about a store doing their own barrel? And bottling it instead of a store pick. I think that's really interesting because I'm so used to having stores doing their own thing where they get sent samples or they go up to whatever distillery they're about to pick from. But I think it's really interesting. I think it's probably good for business as well for a store to be able to work alongside a distillery like that to be able to put out a product. It's almost the same thing, right? They're going to get samples of the of what they could get. They're going to pick the barrel that they like the best. Instead of putting a sticker on it or something else, they're just doing their own bottles with their own labels and building their own brand and, and reputation from that. I mean, I think it's for them, it's a little different, right? Because it's not like there's thousands of bottles coming out. A few hundred here or there that become the Doc 52 and have the label on it. I'll listen. <laughs> Pleasantly. I heard it. Zeke thinks my voice is very melodic tonight. It's nodding him off. I was listening. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I, I chimed up at the perfect time. Before we move on, Zeke, would you buy this, yes or no? Right now, pass. If I'm in the store in February... Probably a different answer. Uh, granted, there's no Tabasco. It's just too hot right now for me to enjoy or, or to find a place in my lineup. Gideon, yes or no on this? I'm, I'm in the same boat as Zeke is. I, right now, it's just too dang hot outside for me to even think about having all that heat on my palate. It would be a, a fall or even maybe a dead of winter kind of thing for me. Knowing the taste profile, I'd buy it now just to make sure I had it, and I'd put it in the cabinet, and then when you guys couldn't get one in the fall because it's all gone, I'd invite you over and crack open the bottle. Yeah, I bet you would, Panama Red. Oh, what a nice friend. I'm, I do what I can. I do what I can. <laughs> Either get busy living or get busy dying. <laughs> you guys can wait all you want, but I'm going to get on it. But no, I I just want to say thank you again to Ryan for sending this up to us. You know, we always give you our our unbiased opinion, but Ryan was nice enough to give us a sample of this and kind of allow us to track their journey as they're putting out different batches and trying new stuff. I think this works because of their palate. They're finding different profiles. It might be coming from a place that we all know, but they're finding different profiles for it, and and they're not getting the same stuff that comes out of that distillery all the time. So that is really unique, refreshing, and I love tracking what they're doing down there. So keep up the good work, Ryan, but keep sending it to us so we can try it out. Just love what you guys are doing. Let's move on. We got a 13-year-old Blender's Mash Crown Royal. It is the third expression of the Noble Collection, but it is the first whiskey from Crown Royal that actually has an age statement. 
It's a corn forward mash bill, 60% corn, 36% rye, 4% barley. So it is not a rye mash. It is new charred oak American barrels and it is 45% ABV, 90 proof and 59.99. Gideon, you lead the way. Tell us what you thought about this one. Full disclosure, I've never had Crown before. I've always kind of strayed away from it because, you know, I'm fascinated with Buffalo Trace. So, like, I can't get enough of it right now. I'm sure Zeke's got a comment on that for later. But, man, on the nose for it, uh, I had specifically a pink cotton candy thing. And then for a 90 proof, I actually had a lot of heat on the nose. That's what I thought. For the palate, super specific. Um, five gum, the solstice mint was what really hit me the powdered sugar thing going on a little bit of rice spice um and then cherry skittles oddly enough and i like his tasting notes keep keep going i like it I, the finish just it kept going for me the the five gum thing just kind of kept sitting on my palate and it was, it was a mint yeah. thing kind of going on you know what i mean it, it was good for my first crown yeah but it's not a crown rye. So there's right. a difference. Those crown ryes are going to have more vanilla, be a little sweeter, uh, especially that pick that, that Turok did down at Elixir. That is straight vanilla sweetness. But Zeke, what did you get on this one? Nose-wise, m- 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 mint. <laughs> I watched Tropic Thunder the night, sorry. <laughs> You never go full, but man. Well, uh, Simple Jack, what do you get on the palate and the, the finish? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Um, honestly, my first thought of the palate was hickory. Um, it, it seemed like a, a campfire with young wood, which there's a good age statement there, but it hit me and it is what it is. I'm going to write down the hits. Beyond that, there was some bitter... Also picked up um, a peach or apricot or some other, you know, seasonal fruit. It just didn't go with the the profile of the juice simply because I, I think about that, you know, like it is now, you know, spring or summer. That's when all those things are budding out and producing. And this was just a very cold pour, for lack of better words. But I guess, obviously, the, the proof and or the rye hug never showed Going down, it, it was still room temperature or less in the Glen Cairn. That's where I kind of rationalized everything. Sorry for the random tangent. Can you, will you just go shake Zeke? I don't. I don't know what happened. He was. He was talkative. He was really good. You just hit the wall, didn't you? <sighs> that the thirteen year crown. I mean, it was. It wasn't complex, but it. It confused me in multiple directions. Well, you'll see it tonight in your head movies. I just did a Tropic Thunder reference for you. Oh. that That's what Simple Jack says in Tropic Thunder. Did not correlate. Did you get a joke? No. Okay. Right. You're over too, John. Sorry. All right. Your movie lines. You, you gotta have a... That's a pretty big Simple Jack quote from Tropic Thunder. Man, well, it, literally I mean, you're right. Two out of... The three people here didn't focus on Simple Jack. I think John and I here are pretty alike in that we make pretty obscure, sometimes pretty obscure movie or TV show references that nobody gets. I'm just a dude. I'm just a dude playing a dude pretending to be another dude. Heard that. I got mint, light vanilla. If you try hard, you get that vanilla. But I got a lot of grass and field notes on that nose it it was kind of like that meadow that i typically get i thought this would be more of a rye because of those notes and then when you have the taste it doesn't necessarily match up with that nose the the taste i got vanilla and mint but there's a dark chocolate oakiness and and hickory that you know i've never got on a crown before lots of wood oak a little bit of toffee in there for the most part after you get past that smoothness it is a wood and an oak and a almost like a burnt component that's in there 
I got slight fruit on the finish. The finish is oak and wood in your throat. Not a lot of chew. It, you know, it does finish like a 90 proofer. The taste, I think, is a little bit higher than a 90 proofer and what you're going to get. But that finish kind of goes back and reminds you that it's a nice, smooth, 90 proof Canadian whiskey. It's good. It's better than, you know, some of the other crowns I've had. You know, for me, I'd probably pass on this one. I would hope that a friend had a bottle that I could enjoy with them. I mean, I'm not saying that this is bad by any means. I just think me personally, for 60 bucks, I'd go get a Four Roses single barrel and be very, very happy if I had to put it up against this one. I mean, the kicker comes if they, uh, <clears throat> you know, bring back those cradle wooden pour things like Crown used to have, OGD, etc. They do that, ah, I'll buy one. <laughs> Look at you doing marketing two weeks in a row. Gideon, what do you think about this? For my first crown, it makes me want to go... I, I would probably get a bottle of it. Just for the sake of having it and just kind of remembering, like, all right, nostalgic. First crown, like, it was good. I would drink it again. But I've heard such good things about Tarak's crown royal pick that he did that it makes me want to go get a bottle of that and then put it up against this and be like, okay, Drock, you did a good job on this. I well, we could this. do that. You we, and I could do that. We should do that. We are practically neighbors. so Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, but I have the pick. Yeah, but does he have any more? Yeah, he got some. Yeah, so Gideon's going to go get another pick. Be careful. Hey, Walker. Hey. <laughs> Gideon poured us... A couple blinds here. It's a side-by-side -side blind. We have no idea what's in these, so we are going to go ahead and fast-forward the tape, try these, come back, and talk about them. So, Zeke, do what you do best. Heartburn hurts. Okay. And we're back. In the break, we tried two things that Gideon brought for us. We have one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left. Thank you. Any any hints you have for us on this? I know that you have had these before. So we've had them before. At least I think you've had them before. I don't know. I mean, there was at least alcohol present in both of them. I I did get some alcohol. I, I did get some notes of whiskey. <laughs> it was brown. <laughs> I, I'm pretty good there. The left one for me was vanilla, sweet, smooth on the nose. It, it was really, wasn't a huge vanilla, but that was the most prevalent thing that was there. And then the taste was corn, peanut, almost a, a payday candy bar type peanut to it. It was not as smooth as the nose would suggest. This one has... The nose and the, the palate on this are complete polar opposites. There could not be more of a dichotomy going on in a whiskey here. And then the finish, though, I got something even different that it was a nice dark chocolate chew. And uh, it kind of stays in your mouth, goes up in your gums. It doesn't really seem like too high of a proof on this one. I would think it would be... Somewhere in the 95 to 110 range is really where I'm going. I know that's a wide variety on the proof there, but I don't think it's something that is over that. But Zeke, what did you get on the left one? Left, uh, nose-wise, I literally just put drunken summer fruit somewhere between pears or green apples maybe. Literally just if you've ever been fortunate or unfortunate enough to had the summer excursion to where somebody hands you a, uh, a spiked piece of fruit. It is what it is. The day might go downhill from there. Either way, um, beyond that, some honeysuckle. Uh, it, it really kind of resonated to me to a honeysuckle to a bit of honey chew if you ever had one of those. The back end just really had that kind of feel to it to me. Those never got out of my teeth. Well, chew more. I, a bit of honey just would go in my teeth, and then I couldn't get it out. You had to use the back ones. Yeah, I I tend to use the front ones. What else do you get on this? Is that... Um, Palette-wise, thought it was hot. Kind of reminded me of cashews. Uh, similar to your notes, it 
it really turned as far as complexity, I would say. Somewhere in between um, nougat, some heat and some starch bitterness. Not overaged, but the heat was there at the end of the day, but it didn't really dictate any part of the tasting. Now you had this. You kind of blinded yourself, Gideon. I did. I poured them and then forgot what I poured them in. I wrote them down beforehand, but I haven't looked at it. So for me on the left, man, I got vanilla straight through. Nose, palate, finish. I thought it was incredible. Um, On the palate, again, the vanilla just kept ringing true for me. And then it had like a a rose water type thing going on. And then like a demerara syrup, which was really, really interesting. And then for the finish, like I said, the vanilla, it just kept... It just kept hanging on for me. It gave me a nice old bear hug and then like a caramel and like a like a sweet, very ripe passion fruit thing that had it was great. And in my haste to allow us to get done so Zeke can go to bed, you know, we should have mentioned what they were first, but let's just go around real quick. This is like a simple answer. Which one did you like better, left or right? So I liked the right better because I thought it was a little bit more complex than the left. Zeke, what do you like better? I was a right as well. They both were good pours. Again, like you touched on. We'll get into the tasting notes. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that we're unbiased here. Gideon, which one did you like better, left or right? I did prefer the left. You So you liked the left more. Mm-hmm. All right, what were they? All right, so John, on your left, I had the Pikesville Rye. Okay. And then on your right, I had the Beast from the East. Ooh. And then for Zeke... Flip flopped them, and then I had the same as John. So you like the Pikesville Rye over the Beast from the East? No, I had the Beast from the East. Oh, my okay. favorite. Yeah. So you and I had the same, and then Zeke was the other way around. Zeke, you like the right. So you like the Pikesville Rye over the Beast from the East? Maybe. Which is funny because Zeke picked Zeke picked that Beast from the East, and it's now that you mentioned. That was Beast from the East. My notes here make complete sense because my nose was straight vanilla ice cream. And for those of you that don't know what Beast from the East is, Beast from the East is a Knob Creek ride pick from Elixir Spirits in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Zeke was actually there for the pick of it. It was mid-February. It was it was non-ideal. Cool. The best tasting thing from the whole pick process was the limestone water. But that, the nose <laughs> on that one, the nose on that one is straight vanilla ice cream. Just so sweet. But, I mean, if you think that Pikesville has vanilla, that piece from the east is just, it's like going to an ice cream parlor and getting straight vanilla ice cream out of just out of the big bucket that they put it in. And then the the palette for me, I got a little bit of dill, caramel toffee, a little bit of oak and chocolate, but for the most part, it was very smooth. And then the finish, it has a nice heat that lingers. It Chocolate that stays in gums. I said it was more complex than the first one. And I said it was a lot hotter than the left. It was noticeable that it was a little bit hotter. Which is funny to me because the Pikesville is 110. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it drank as hot as a 110. I mean, I did say 95 to 110 is where I kind of put it in. You had the right ballpark. I had the ballpark, but I think it almost tasted a little more like 100. And then the Beast is actually hotter than 110, but it doesn't taste 115. It probably tastes more like a 105 to 110. I remember having it on its own. Beast from the East was very smooth. Uh, That Knob Creek Rye, it was a very, very smooth. And we've talked about how in Knob Creek Ryes, you almost get a a few different profiles. One's very smooth. One's very bourbon heavy. um, And one's kind of in between. This range. I mean, we've, we've had plenty of picks by now. And some are super bourbon, some are super rye mint, some are some hybrid in between. 
not saying any of them that we've had are bad per se, but it is a very interesting, especially in the realm of a single barrel pick to see here's this barrel, this barrel, and this barrel. We rolled them all out together. Three stores picked them and all three stores had good juice, but very different profiles. And the funny thing about this one too, is that Pikesville was going to be 50 to 60, but that beast from the East is 35, right? That $35 pick is, it's pretty banging. Yeah. That's one of the most, I had beast from the East today, actually, before I came, the picture that I took for father's day, I used beast from the East. I I had to drink some of it. That is, I gave some to my wife, but, I had to pick some of it. That is pretty funny. Hey, you trust in my palate, finally. I always trust your palate. <laughs> I've never once not trusted your palate. At least Gideon and I trust your palate more than you do. That's possible, too. <laughs> uh, I've had more than once to wear um, first pass, heavy nose, light tasting, if any tasting at all. There's one results. Second time around, more palate, less nose. You see what happens. Inevitably, there's at least like three strikes of where I changed it right before the race ran. Like, uh, I don't know. Well, I've certainly enjoyed this. Gideon, thank you so much for coming. You're going to have to do this again. I mean, you are right here. Literally right down the street. I'm so thankful for y'all having me out. I really enjoyed it. Well, anytime you want to come back, feel free. We're we're happy to have you. They can find you on the Instagrams at Gideon Bowley. Mm-hmm. G-I-D-E-O-N-B-O-L-E-Y. Yes, Listen to him play the guitar. Any other place they can find you? Uh, on the Facebook and Twitter. It's all the same, straight across the board. Go ahead and check him out. Thank you again. Check us out on Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. Please log on, leave us a five-star review, and go ahead and tell us why you're leaving us a five-star review. We would love to hear from you. Send us a message whenever you want. Facebook, Instagram, we're always happy to interact and get back to you. Thank you again to everyone who entered our Father's Day giveaway The winner would have already been announced by the time this show comes out. So thank you so much for participating in that. Zeke, anything you want to say to the folks before we get off? (laughs) All right. On that note, we'll talk to you all next week. What? Before we get off. You sounded bad. Zeke, is there anything else you want to say to the folks before we stop recording? Cheers. Ciao. See ya. Good night. Goodbye. Thanks.